What's up, y'all? I'm Routini, and welcome back to the THD vlog, especially our new subscribers. Thanks, y'all. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at some basic equipment to improve the video you can shoot on your phone. Some of it very, very basic, and some fancy accessories. If you've missed those, take a look. Let's put a link right up there. Now this week, we're gonna be putting all of that stuff together. Today, you'll see how we've applied human know-how to a complex alien technology. I'm working as kind of a one-man band here, and I need to be able to move and work quick and light. So I've got two remote setups that I'm gonna try working with. One of them fast and light, the other heavy, but fancy. So let's take a look. Bang the intro. Fast and light, ready for run-and-gun filming, the R1. The R1 rig adds the Moment Anamorphic Lens and the Rode Video Micro Shotgun Mic. To put the pieces together, the R1 mount utilizes a cell phone mount by Joby, as well as a three-directional hot shoe by Ulanzi. Unfortunately, audio requires a 3.5mm stereo audio cable, a TRS to TRRS adapter, and a 3.5 audio to USB-C converter. Ugh. I've got the converter held on by gum and the wiring bound up as best as I can, but the, the cabling is what makes this setup bulky, uh, and honestly, the road mic is going to need to start, yeah. We have yet to see if the performance of the Rode mic justifies this extra bulk, but I'm curious. As a super minimal version though, just the moment anamorphic lens directly onto the phone and you're good to go. Advanced. Integrated. Intelligent. R2. Smooth camera motions and active target tracking combined with enhanced sound and steady grip to provide the ultimate in remote field photography. Based around the Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal by DJI and using Ulanzi hardware to link it all together, the R2 rig again combines the Pixel 4 with the Rode Video Micro this time also adding a flashlight. As always, I've still got the option of using the Moment anamorphic lens. The gimbal can handle the weight, but it does make it a little slower and less responsive. It's gotta work a little bit harder. The combined bulk and weight of the cables, the anamorphic lens, and the optional R2-D2 head really are challenging for the gimbal. It's banging on stuff and getting, getting hung up. It, it's having a hard time with all this. Because of its placement, which certainly looks good, the R2-D2 head completely uh, prevents the device from folding up like it's supposed to, so he's removable. I've just got him held on with poster gum. <laughs> Time will tell. The performance of the Rode mic is gonna have to be pretty compelling uh, or pretty essential for what I'm doing to justify the bulk of all of this cabling. Controls are straightforward and simple. You've got one button that handles power and standby modes, another to start and stop the record, and a joystick for fine tuning the frame. You've also got manual zoom controls and a trigger control to resume the action or engage sport mode. This flashlight is by no means the most powerful tactical torch in existence or a high-grade photography light. It's more in the better than nothing if you want to get a picture in the dark. The flashlight is also quickly and easily removable. Notice the small tan clip that I've attached with shot cord. That's part of a single mount rig that actually works pretty well. The other side of the mount attaches to my pack and the whole rig just hangs straight down my center line and keeps my hands free on the trail. Very handy. The optional handle extension is almost essential with this unit. For one, being able to open out into three feet lets you set the thing down, which is obviously handy. The two-handed grip, though, also is very sturdy and feels very familiar.
Altogether, it's a fun and exciting rig to use. There is a little bit of overhead in keeping the equipment operational, but when it's behaving, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of shots, especially long moving shots over uneven terrain like out in the woods or something. It can make it a lot easier to keep your subject in frame and your feet on the trail with the gimbal handling the fine tuning and keeping the target in frame. Both setups have some obvious room for improvement, but also plenty of potential. And for right now, they seem like they're gonna handle my needs for remote shooting out in the field, at least well enough to move on to more interesting problems. Like audio. Pain in my ass. Audio remains a challenge and will likely be the subject of future videos as solutions present themselves. I don't care! That's it, we're going home. We've got more content on the way, including a look at lenses you can add to your cell phone, field trials where I take these toys out in the woods, and some more studio productions. In the meantime, please check out one of our previous videos right here. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to keep seeing y'all back here at the Technicolor Hoedown. See ya.